Okay, in a previous video, which I will link down below, I looked at the difference between two cars colliding head on at the same speed and the same mass versus holding one of those cars stationary at zero velocity and then doubling the speed of the other one. And spoiler alert, if you hold the one car stationary with a wall or something like that, then the damage is going to be way more than if you let it recoil. If you let it recoil, the physics works either way because the reference frame should be it should be invariant under the reference frame. So, but I, I you know, it, it's kind of non-intuitive and I wanted to model this also. So we're gonna make a model and this is another program. I'll link to this down below. Uh, here is a program that I made for two dimensional elastic collisions. So here's two balls that are not moving at all. Why are they not moving? Oh, contact is not defined. I modified this program and then I changed it. And, oh here, okay. So I wanted to show you the changes. So let's run that again. This is the original program. And the way this works is when these two balls overlap, then there is a spring force pushing the two balls apart. And, and with that spring force, that's essentially the same thing you have during a, a normal collision. And this gives an elastic collision. Uh, you see here that the momentum is conserved. I printed out down here and the kinetic energy is conserved. So everything's cool. But now I wanna make it an inelastic. I wanna make them stick together. And then I wanna turn this into the, the situation that we had be, uh, before. So what I'm gonna do, here is the part where I add in a spring force. So I calculate the distance, the vector between the two centers of the balls. And if that distance is less than the size of the two balls added together, then I have the spring force. Otherwise up here, I have the spring force is zero. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is add one simple thing. I'm gonna say, uh, if they, once they hit, they always stay in contact. And so, as they move apart, there's a spring force pulling them back together. So it not only does it push them apart, but it once they get further apart than their centers, it gets pulled back together. So they're kind of like uh, stuck together with a sticky thing. And that's not the best way to do it, but it works. Okay, so I'm gonna make up this, this variable called contact equals false. So it's a Boolean variable, so that means that it's either true or false. And I'm gonna start off with they're not in contact. Now down here, I'm gonna say if the magnitude of the distance between them is less than the radius, then I have a spring force. Or, if that, or contact. So if contact, if that's true, then I have a calculate the spring force. Or if it's smaller than the radiuses add together, I add, calculate that. And so then, they start off, they're not in contact. Once they become in contact, I want them to always be in contact. So here I'm just gonna add, contact equals true. So that's all I need to do, I think. So I set this variable to false and then I put a new condition in my statement and then I make that thing true. So once I make it true, it'll always be true. And it'll continue to do this. I think this will work. Okay, so let's see. So let me turn down the spring constant just so you can really see what's going on. See, you can see that shaking right there and let me increase the time for, to four seconds or something like that. See, that's exactly what I want. They're stuck together in the oscillating, but I want it even better. So that's why I can increase the spring constant to 999 or whatever you want. You can try different values. Uh, I'm also going to decrease the time interval and increase the rate. So this means that it'll be even faster calculations and even a better collision. See, you can barely see this moving. It is moving, okay. Um, now, also down here, you will see that momentum is conserved as it should be. Kinetic energy is not conserved. It's close, but it's not, okay. Now we can go change this to what we want. I'm gonna put them uh, ball A at zero, ball B at zero, and they're going towards each other uh, at opposite no, I didn't, one stationary. Okay, let's do this one first. 
Okay, there they collided. And this is the first case. You can see them still shaking. Uh, the change in the kinetic energy. Oh, let's do this. Let's do this down here. Because I really care about the change in kinetic energy. So print uh, dk equals uh, k2 minus k1 joules. Okay, so this is the case where two cars are moving the same speed and they collide into each other head-to-head, -head, inelastic collision, and I get a change in kinetic energy of negative 1.7. Now, I said in my previous video that if the if I double the speed of car A and make that car that velocity zero, but let it recoil, it should still work. I should get the same thing. So let's do that. So up here, I'm going to make this velocity times two. I make this one times zero. And let's just see. Notice they do recoil, but I get the same change in kinetic energy. Also, momentum is conserved, so everything works. Now, if I had an external force in that, it would not work. Okay, But you can double the speed of one of the cars as long as the other car is free to recoil, or both cars are free to recoil. So here's how you do that and how you make el inelastic collisions. So if this is stuff that you like, this is where you need to subscribe or like and do all the bell thing that you do with other YouTube stuff. So I'm counting on you to help out. I'll include this code down below and you can play with it and you should. And I'll talk to you guys later.